and welcome back friends. I hope wherever you are it's a beautiful day. In this video we're building the city of Astoria in Cascadia Bay. As you may have guessed from the opening cinematics, we're working on the waterfront, including making a custom baseball stadium and building out some of the surrounding neighborhoods. I'm starting by lowering this entire section because it's way too high off the water and looks a bit unrealistic. I want to create a tiered look with the steps from the main road down to the piers to help make the drastic elevation change look a little more planned. I'm using these multi-layered key walls that came with the Bridges and Piers content creator pack and adding an invisible terraforming network to get rid of some of the cliffs that ended up clipping through. While I'm using the San Francisco Ferry Building in this city, for this section of Astoria's waterfront, I'm mostly modeling it off of the waterfronts in the actual Astoria, Oregon and downtown Seattle. In this alternate timeline version of Astoria, this building no longer functions as an active ferry terminal and instead hosts a marina with many different types of boats available for visitors to rent for a day out of sailing on the bay. I'm roughly modeling the layout of the marina on this marina in the real life Astoria, but making it look more urban to continue the lore that Astoria grew into a large city instead of the small town that it is IRL. To make the marina function and add some life to the bay, I'm using an invisible boat spawner, which functions like a fishing harbor and making a sort of random path for the boats to sail around. At the very northernmost tip of the Astoria Peninsula is the Smith Point Market. What was once solely an industrial fishing pier has been converted into somewhat of a tourist attraction with a Ferris wheel and small park. While commercial fishing still happens here, the fish market at Smith Point is somewhat overpriced and kitschy. More of a photo op for curious out-of-towners than anything else. This is very loosely based on the Pike Place market in Seattle, not trying to make it look like the real thing, just sort of capturing the spirit of the place. The wharf assets that I'm using are modeled after those that exist in the real-life Seattle waterfront and their unique buildings. And while I know there's a mod that can let you place them multiple times, I don't have that installed, so I'm just copying them with Move It instead. Like in Seattle, at the end of the pier is a fun Ferris wheel where people can go take in views of the entire region. Along with the Ferris wheel is a small park with cute little statues of giant fish to remind visitors of the area's roots and honor the commercial fishermen and countless fish who gave their lives to feed the people of Cascadia Bay and beyond. This little gateway isn't modeled off of anything in particular. I imagine it was probably built at some point in the area's transition from industry to tourism to sort of spruce the place up. Of course, the most important attraction in Smith Point is the fish market. I'm using the vanilla asset for this, which fit in perfectly in the available land. Around the fish market are some warehouses that are functional industrial zones and still support what is left of the fishing industry here. As Smith Point is transitioning into a tourism-based economy, some luxury yacht rental businesses have opened up in the old fishing wharves, giving visitors yet another opportunity to enjoy the waterfront. While the real-life Astoria Riverwalk is somewhat quaint, it looks more like this. In our alternative timeline version, it is a bustling commercial hub and often the first place visitors see when they arrive in Astoria. Along the Riverwalk are a few luxury condos attached to their very own private marina. Many of the condos are vacation rentals, commanding some of the highest nightly rates in the city, but a select few are occupied by some of the wealthiest business people in town with the beautiful walkable riverfront just steps away. Recognizing the opportunity created by proximity, Marriott International opened up a location right across the street from the passenger harbor with the easy access to the local streetcar system. This hotel is the perfect home base for any traveler to explore the wonders that the city has to offer. Near the hotel is a beautiful plaza, which I made using this new plaza from the Financial Districts DLC and the Vanilla Office Park Plaza. Along the plaza is a small commercial district with a movie theater and excellent dining options such as California Pizza Kitchen, McDonald's, and the local favorite, Frank's Fish Sticks. Like any first-class city, Astoria has a Major League Baseball team, the Cascadia Pines. A few years ago, Amazon purchased the naming rights to what was formerly known as Pines Park for an undisclosed sum. It is a beautiful waterfront stadium with sweeping views of the Cascadia Bay Bridge and the Columbia River. The large brick walls, 
serve the dual purpose of obscuring the view for spectators in the bleachers and making hitting home runs a little more difficult in this ballpark, giving a little help to the Pines' admittedly poor pitching staff. So the idea for this build was heavily inspired by another creator I used to watch quite a bit named Jeremy Thunder, who was doing an East Coast style city called Neptune City. One thing that he did that I really liked was take the vanilla baseball field solely for the fact that custom fields don't support the animations of the players on the field, and I wanted a lively stadium myself, so I took a page from his playbook. <laughs> And I'm using the Vanilla Stadium from the Campus DLC and adding various buildings around it using procedural objects. The idea of a waterfront ballpark comes from Oracle Park in San Francisco, and I'm heavily basing the design of the stadium on that, but changing it up a bit to make it unique. One quick note, while recording this portion of the build, I don't really know what happened, but my settings in OBS got a little funky and it cut off the bottom of the game user interface. Oh, I was already three hours into recording the build before I noticed. So I didn't want to re-record everything, but luckily, none of the actual build was obscured. For the customization of the stadium, I spent some time looking for assets that kind of work together, with the front of the stadium having a clock tower, which is similar to the one in San Francisco, but along the outsides of the stadium, I wanted it to look a little more modern. I imagine that these buildings not only house the team offices, concession stands, and souvenir shops, but also luxury skyboxes, and possibly even some housing for the true baseball fanatics making Amazon Park a truly mixed-use development. One trick I found while doing this build in PO is that to quickly copy a building, you can actually hold control while dragging it along the position axis. And once you release control, it'll create an exact copy of the object. This was incredibly helpful to me throughout the whole process. But you can also copy POs using Move It, just like any other object. Really, I'm trying to cover up almost anything in the vanilla asset that doesn't quite match. So these large brick walls did the trick. I know nothing about the regulations and design of baseball stadiums, so I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm getting wrong here. A unique quirk of Amazon Park is that it doesn't have a scoreboard. Long ago, Coca-Cola and Guinness Beer bought the rights to the scoreboards and decided to just put up their logos with no context. This had made the fan base of the Pines some of the most proficient in using an old school pen and paper scorecard Although it's officially against MLB regulations, somehow they've gotten away with it after all these years. Which is probably why the Pines, although being a mediocre team overall, have one of the best at-home records in all of professional baseball. Up on the top of the clock tower building of the stadium, I put a little seating area with a couple of kiosks that sell coffee and beer. The area is open to season ticket holders who want to get away from the crowd and enjoy the game from high above the average fans below. The roofs of the buildings I added to the side looked somewhat odd from above, so I added this metal roof, which really has no function other than to make everything look a little better. And sometimes that's all that matters. After watching their beloved Pines players pitch a perfect game, the citizens of Astoria need some place to celebrate their victory. Marine Drive is the main east-west artery of the city, and it's a vibrant mixed-use corridor with excellent public transit and protected bike lanes. Right next to the stadium are some mixed-use apartment buildings built in the same general architectural style as the stadium itself, giving the area its somewhat unified character and feel. Beneath the bridge along Marine Drive is the remnants of when the east end of downtown was primarily a warehouse district, with some light industry setting up shop in what is the least valuable plots of land in the neighborhood, Like in San Francisco, there's a small harbor nearby where home run and foul balls that manage to make it beyond the walls sometimes land to be caught by lucky sailors. I'm using procedural objects to make another tiered dock structure around this wharf, sort of hugging the waterfront around the ballpark and jetting out into the river with the stairs leading from the wharf down to the marina. Of course, every stadium needs lots and lots of parking. 
So I'm using the big parking lot assets to make this huge lot on reclaimed land. This pack is kind of a pain to work with, but ends up looking quite nice. Although it doesn't have lights like the parking lot roads I typically use, so I had to add them manually. I'm sort of mimicking the development pattern on the western end of the bridge with these high-rise apartments going up to the highway and then filling out some blocks with commercial and residential buildings to create a dense mixed-use street scene along Marine Drive. We're starting to get into the area that I've laid out based on the real downtown Astoria, and soon I'm going to transition into doing more of a one-to-one -one style build of the actual Astoria for these areas of the city. But for now, I just want to create a gradual, smooth transition out of the dense urban core that we've built so far. I'm also detailing up the front of the ballpark, adding some landscaping and a statue of George Washington. The lore behind it is simple. Across the river is the state of Washington, and the team put it up to be inclusive of their fans who commute in from across the bridge. Of course, the real stars of the show are these two street musicians who just arrived in Astoria from somewhere in Utah. This duo calls themselves the Digital Mormons? No, God! No, God, please, no! No! People don't have the heart to tell them that they aren't very good, and their name is cringe. But it shows. They didn't make very much money in front of the stadium, so they packed up and moved over to McDonald's in search of an audience who understands their art. Up next, if you haven't already, check out my other city of Saltaire. It's another modded build based on Salt Lake City. I think this episode's a great place to start. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes of Cascadia Bay.